Hi, everyone. Keone here from the Haunting You podcast. I am working on animations for our 2022 haunts. Specifically, I'm working on uh, programming my DMX controlled fog machine. And so I want to do a quick tutorial here to talk about how I am doing that because it's pretty cool. So I picked up this fog machine at Fear Expo earlier this year. It is a Fogmasters F1500 MOV head. So this is a DMX programmable fog machine that has a head that can pivot uh, as well as you can adjust the output of the fog, the duration of the fog, and, and all of that. So it's uh, provides a level of control well beyond any fog machine I have owned to this point. And so I really wanted to take advantage of that. It's my first foray into DMX, and as usual, Fright Props is making it super easy to do this very effectively. So I want to take a moment and just talk about how I am using their products to control my DMX fog machine. The product I am using today is called the Pico DMX DMX controller. It is, you know, about the size of my hand, so a very small box. And uh, on the side, you have one input for your 12 volts going in, as well as uh, 12 volts going out and a trigger uh, input, just like every one of their other controllers. Uh, and this is so you can use just uh, really any kind of trigger. I have it wired today with a simple push button. Ultimately, I think it'll be set up with a motion sensor. So I have 12 volts to power the motion sensor as well as uh, the trigger input for that. And then I have your standard three pin uh, DMX. And then to program it, uh, you you see there there's no other buttons or anything on this box. Uh, on the back though, there is an SD card slot. So you have to use Fright Props director software to program the Pico DMX. So that's what we're gonna do here real quick. Right here on the screen, you see I have their director software already up. And when you first open it, this is the screen that you will see. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find the Pico DMX. And we're just going to uh, title it. This is, uh, let's see, Fog Machine DMX Test. And we're going to create the show. And then it comes up here. So the first thing we'll need to do when we get into the director software is come up here to show and then add DMX slave. And that will let us choose uh, what this Pico DMX is going to be controlling. They have a variety of options for uh, many of the products that they have or that they carry that will allow you to expand your show, but we're just using a specific DMX device. So that I'm clicking on DMX device. And then you have to choose what device you are trying to use. If it's, they have a number of them that are already pre-programmed in here by manufacturer and device name. For So just for example, if I go to Fright Props, then you can program their uh, Cerebrus three-way flame shooter, which I want to know more about now, as well as a number of DMX decoders, flame blaster, hellfire flame cannon, just, just for examples. Or let's say you have a Froggy's Frog product. You can do any of these very easily already pre-programmed into the director software. But they do not carry any of global special effects products. So we're going to have to uh, do it ourselves. So what we're going to do and do, instead of included, we're going to click on mine. And that lets us build our own product in there. So to set up a new device, you're just going to come over here and click new. You put in the manufacturer, and in our case, it's global special effects. I can't type. And it is a device name. It's a fog machine. And the model number, the F1500 MOV. If you want to add a picture, you can add a picture. I, I don't see a lot of value there. But then you can add channels. Now, when you're customizing your own DMX, it's important you get the channels right. And so what I'm going to do is go back to the user manual for the F1500 MOV and scroll down here to operating the machine with a DMX 512 controller. This tells us that there are just two different channels that uh, this fog machine is used to program. One is for adjusting the working angle and one is for adjusting fog output. And if we look down a little further, we see right here, the DMX controller channels are one and four. Channel one to adjust the fog output and channel four to adjust the working angle. So that is what we need to set up 
here in our uh, in our channels. So we have channel one, and channel one, as we just saw, is for fog output. So we will call name this fog output. And then you have to choose the type of channel that it is. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different types of channels. And if you need you know, to help you choose what they are, honestly, the help article here is extremely helpful. It gives you a pretty good description of each one of them. What we care about today is, uh, or for our fog output, is this one, line with fill. That gives us a zero to 255 value. And it is good for things like power level of a light, uh, volume if you're adjusting uh, some sort of amplifier uh, or light brightness, uh, as well as fog volume, strobe intensity, uh, things like that. So fog volume is exactly what we want to do. So line with fill is the most appropriate here. So we have line with fill. And then you can change the color that will appear on the uh, when you actually do it. And you'll see that in a moment. So we'll set it, the fog output as red. Then we need a second. And we already know that is going to be channel four because our user manual told us so. And channel four is used to adjust the working angle. So we're going to name this one working angle. Channel type again, let's go back and look. So this time, what we're controlling is how the head is moving, right? And so it's kind of like line with fill, except it's not, the power doesn't matter. It's, it's a servo that's controlling this. So we're looking for line in this case, most often used to represent values that are not power related, servo positions, pan, tilt, etc. That is exactly the feature we want. So this is just going to be a simple line, no fill. Okay, so now we have our manufacturer, we have the device name, we have our model number, and we have the DMX channels all set up. So we push save. Now this DMX based system is saved in the director software and it will be there uh, every time we go into it. So we can select it and then it will take us to our, our programming screen. So with this particular fog machine, when, as soon as I activate, it's going to start the fog. And all I can control is how much fog and the angle that that fog is being sprayed at. And I can do that very simply. So I will just click exactly, so watch what happens if I click at 10 seconds. There we go. It gives me zero all the way out to 10 seconds. And then all of a sudden it's giving me about what? 75% output, something like that. 185 out of 255, so about 75% output. If I want to, if I want more or anywhere else where I want it to be spraying, I can just click and now it'll just give me a burst every two seconds. Or if I want it to start with very little, ramp up the fog. So now I'm just pressing and holding as I drag the mouse and it's putting it exactly where my mouse is and it will continue going even beyond the 10 second mark. And I can cut that back by dragging the bar here. I can add more by dragging it this way, but basically wherever I am touching the mouse, that is where something is going to happen. Like it's crazy easy to program here. So in my case, I only want the fog to be going for about 10 seconds. So we're gonna go 10 seconds and I want to start basically full output for five seconds and then it tapers off. Because ultimately what, what this is going to be for me is a pipe bursts. So big blast and then it kind of trickles off. And then the working angle is our second channel. So it's programmed the exact same way. And basically what I'm doing at zero, the, uh, the output is exactly straight ahead. And at maximum at 255, it is straight up 90 degrees. So I'm just alternating between those as it's going. In my case, fog machine is gonna be sitting on the floor. And so uh, when people trigger it, it'll hit them at the feet and then kind of spray up and down them as they're walking past. And again, for 10 seconds. And that's it, it is programmed. It's, or at least it's ready to send it over to the Pico DMX. To do that, I just come up here to export. 
and I am going to send it to uh, my E drive. My E drive is my SD card. So you need an SD card to transfer it onto the Pico DMX, but you do not need to leave the, the SD card in the Pico DMX while it's running. So I have my Pico DMX loaded in. I select it. It is my drive number, my drive letter E. And we're going to load show into internal memory rather than run the show from the SD card because that allows us to uh, take the SD card with us when we're done. Now we'll just push export. And now it is exporting the show onto the SD card. Now let's jump over to the hardware side and we will uh, look at getting it onto the Pico DMX. All right, so now let's talk about the hardware. We have our Pico DMX here, and I have it plugged in using the, the three-way XLR cord into the input on my fog machine. I also have power going to the fog machine. It's on, and it's been on for a while, so it's already heated up and ready to go. And then I have also wired just a simple push-button trigger onto the... Uh, Pico DMX that will not it's not the final trigger that I'm going to use but it will work for today's purposes So now I'm just going to take my SD card and put it into the Pico DMX Slide it in and you see it flash green uh, The first time you do that it may blink green rapidly or about a one per second that means it is uh, uploading firmware you need to wait for it to finish uploading the firmware before you can use it. But once it is blinking a steady green, as it is now, it's ready to go. Okay, now that uh, it is blinking green like normal, as soon as we push the button, it'll trigger and should hit it. That was awesome. You could see right at the beginning how the moving head uh, was moving back and forth, and it gave us a nice big blast. It was much harder to see the uh, the way the fog uh, died off at the end, but it did. It, you could tell from the side where it was doing it. So it was really that easy. Go check out the Pico DMX if you want to get into controlling DMX type props because it is providing me just a whole other level of controllability for my props. Super easy, a little bit on the pricey side, but uh, in my mind, well worth it. And, you know, once a year, it's okay. It's okay. Just don't tell my wife that. Anyway, if you want to see, learn more about how we are building our props, definitely go subscribe to our channel on YouTube and check out the Haunting You podcast at hauntingyou.com, just the letter U, and that will take you to the rest of our podcast episodes, as well as links to all of our social media. I got to get back to work because I'm building three haunts this year and things are just getting crazy. So we will see you next time. Until then, happy haunting. <laughs>